So today we're going to be painting these beautiful roses. The reference photo is found over on Pixabay. Uh, if you do a Google search or a search on roses, they'll come up pretty quickly. Um, these are going to be done in ink tints. This is a medium I've never used before, so I'm kind of excited. I'll have to work through some struggles and you can just join me in my quest to get this done. So as you can see, I've already done my line drawing. <clears throat> and the ink tints come in pencil form and block form, and I'll be using both. Uh, for this project. Right now I'm starting out with the pencil. Uh, now that I've already done it that way, I probably would have started out with the blocks. I tend to like the blocks better for a base, definitely. Um, for me, they're just easier to use. The pencils kind of leave a grainy texture. Um, but they are, it is kind of easy when you can just draw it on there. So ink tints are a lot like watercolor, except for their ink, so they're permanent. Um, that doesn't mean they're light fast. Uh, it just means that the ink is permanent. Once it dries, once it dries, you can no longer move the color like you can in watercolor, where you can add water to it after it dries and then move the color around. You cannot do that with ink tints. <clears throat> So I'm working on a mixed media paper that's a very heavy weight. I believe it's 140. I'm not 100% sure on that. <clears throat> but I will have all of the uh, supplies I used on this over on my website under the Patreon uh, section. So I'm just using... It's... I believe the color was bark. It's kind of a, a blackish brown color to fill in some of the background. <clears throat> and like I said before, I've never used ink tints either the blocks or the pencils. I just got these and I, I've wanted to try them. I've seen some videos with them but I haven't done watercolor in a long time so this was a big learning experience for me and I will admit even after doing the project I still need a lot of kind of a lot of practice with it but I really enjoyed it. It was a lot faster uh, than acrylics or obviously oil. But I still did my same technique. I still uh, did layer upon layer upon layer until I kind of reached um, a level where I was happy with it. I did get frustrated with it at times, but that's just learning a new medium. That's just to be expected. And if you haven't ever tried ink tints or another medium that you're kind of interested in, I definitely would encourage you to 
kind of reach outside of your comfort zone and try something new. You'll learn so much about art and about painting, especially when you when you jump mediums like this. You it just really broadens your horizon and it'll make you a better painter in the medium that you're working that you enjoy working in or are more familiar with. But don't ever be afraid of a challenge, you know, or growth, personal growth. Um, and have faith that you can do it because I know you can. If I can do it, anybody can do it. You know, it just, I got this done, but I still feel like I need some more practice. But, you know, what is the old adage, practice makes perfect? It's very true. You know, so don't be, don't be scared to challenge yourself to try something new. So now I've switched to the ink tense blocks. And what I do is I put water on the block and fill my paintbrush up that way. I'm just kind of rubbing the water onto the block and letting it kind of melt into the paintbrush. I also am kind of using water in that little tray too when I need because I needed a lot of of this bark color for this section I'm going to speed up this portion where I'm just doing the background. <clears throat> From here on, I just use the blocks, but I'm kind of slow. I you can tell my hand is swollen. I've my jammed my thumb and my wrist um, messing with goats, farming and ranching, I guess. <clears throat> so my hand's real, real stiff, and it just... That was one of the <clears throat> one of the problems um, I was struggling with. So it wasn't it wasn't all the intense fault. It, a lot of it was just the the uh, limitations of my thumb and wrist. Uh, my thumb is real real stiff, so it was it was just kind of awkward holding the paintbrush for this. So <clears throat> it took me a lot longer than it probably should have. You know, and I spent some time, I was going to have a more detailed background, as you can tell from my finished uh, photo of my painting in the corner, I went a different route with the background than I originally had planned. So now we'll slow this back down since we've started on the roses. <clears throat> and I've started with, I used all of the reds in my kit. And I have the Ink Tense, the 36 pack, both the pencil and the block. And so right now I'm using Shiraz. And I'm just kind of blocking in in my colors, you know, like I normally do. And then I'm adding a little of the chili red.
And I also used cherry and poppy red. And I'm using, right now I'm using a number three round, just a cheap paintbrush from Hobby Lobby. So there's a portion of the video that got cut off uh, because my SD card <clears throat> ran out of uh, memory <clears throat> and my excuse me my camera doesn't ever notify me of that and I try to pay attention to it but you know when you get kind of in the zone you forget that you have things another job to do I guess <clears throat> so I'm I'm using for the yellow I am using let's say uh, sherbet lemon was the bright let's see the sherbet lemon's kind of a, a greenish yellow for the real bright yellow I used sun yellow and then the transition to the red I used sienna gold and then I also used an orange which was tangerine and again these all came in that 36 pack of pencils and blocks and the blocks and the pencils are the exact same color, which makes it really nice. And I'm still using the number three round, but I will be switching between a number three round, a number six round, and a number ten round. They're Royal and Lang Nickel uh, from Hobby Lobby. They're just cheap paint brushes. So I'm still just blocking in my my colors. This is all going to, you know, just my first layer. If you've seen any of my acrylic paintings, then, you know, I just, I'm doing the exact same thing I do there. I'm just kind of blocking in the color, and then I'll start adding layers until I reach the final amount of detail that I'm looking for. <clears throat> And just quickly, on the background, I used uh, a number 8 flat and a number 12 flat. I kind of flipped between those two um, and also the rounds. But these are the number 8 and number 12 flat by Royal and Langnickel. Um, I used those as well. I'm not worried about the brush strokes and the uneven colors in the larger sections. Uh, that's all something that I'm going to refine as I add more layers.
So I'm kind of lining out the veins in the leaves in the background. Again, I kind of go a whole nother way with this background. So this was all kind of just wasted effort there. And then I realized that I had painted that green and it was supposed to be red in the reference photo. So you always want to make sure you're double checking your reference photo. Another thing I had lined my when I did my line drawing for this, I had done it in the outlining pencil that came in the ink tent set. I found out quickly that it does not dissolve. So I struggled with getting that outline hidden in the sections of the yellow. So I would rather instead of using that outline pencil I would recommend using a like water soluble graphite pencil or something like that or use the colored ink tents pencils don't use the outline pencil So now you can see I'm starting to work on my detail, darkening, darkening the edges. <clears throat> the edges of this, these roses are almost a black edge right at the top. But I'm not using black, I'm using um, the Shiraz, I believe. And a gray. I just saw that. That was a. Uh, it was actually. Let's see if I can figure out what color that was. It's called Indian ink. It's kind of a greenish black, um, to darken some of those edges. The Shiraz wasn't getting quite dark enough. You see how I'm going back and forth between the blocks and the pencils? I think the pencils work better once you've got a base layer of uh, ink on your paper.
these inks are extremely forgiving. Uh, the white in the set is amazing because you can literally just white out a section that you don't like. You'll see me do it several times um, in this in this video where I went to dark, especially in this uh, where the my hands covering it, but that line on that one petal goes all the way to the base, and in the photo, it doesn't. It's not that distinct. So you'll see, I'll use white to white that out so that I can lighten that line up. So the white is pretty amazing in this in this kit. How opaque it, opaque it is. <clears throat> You can see that these inks have really good pigment and they go on, they're really bright. And when you're using the pencils, you don't have to use hardly any pressure at all. They go on, you know, real, real smooth and easy. <clears throat> And they blend and move just like watercolors when you're trying to, you know, blend two colors together. You know how you can, you can move one color back just by rubbing into it. Um, it these move exactly the same way, but once they dry, they're more permanent. So this is day two of the drawing, or this painting, rather. <clears throat> and where my studio is set up on our property, I don't have internet. Um, I Because I was uh, downloading a video for YouTube, um, I had to leave my portable hard drive at work. My boyfriend and I own a beekeeping supply store here in the little town that, that we live in. And luckily, so I had left it, my portable hard drive up there, which had all of my files and my reference photos. For this painting <laughs> on that portable hard drive, and so I'm painting this uh, with the reference photo that I was able to pull up on my phone, uh, which is not how I recommend doing it. <laughs> so um, there's some areas where I kind of mess things up, and then <clears throat> later on when I get my portable uh, hard drive back and I start looking and comparing this painting with the uh, blown up version of the reference photo, I realized that I had some areas that were wrong and I had to go in and adjust those. Now the photo in the corner of the finished painting is a little brighter than it actually is in real life. I'm not sure why it looks like it's like it's glowing. It's not quite that bright.
So here's where I'm going to go in. That spine right there uh, is way too dark. This is one of the issues I had when I was using the reference photo on my phone. <clears throat> so now I'm going to, I'm using that white to basically just wipe that all out. And then I'll go back in and, and fix it. One of my goals with Patreon is to uh, get internet out here. Um, we live out in a rural area, so internet is expensive out here because you have to use um, a specific provider, and we just can't afford it right now. Plus, I have to have it at, at my studio and not up at the house, so that's a big debate with, with my boyfriend. He would rather have it at the house, but I need it down here. And we live on 40 acres, so the studio is about 20 acres over from where our house is. Um, so the signal is not going to reach all the way to the house. But once I get internet out here... Uh, Editing videos and getting them loaded and stuff will be a lot faster and I'll be able to, to do a lot more. So I'm still just building up my colors with, you know, I it was a pretty limited palette. I read off all of the colors that I used for this whole thing. I will go over the greens um, that I use at the end. Because a lot of the greens that I used in the background uh, currently, I changed uh, when I went a different direction with the background. But I will go over those when I get to that when we get to that section. <clears throat> They're still just building up the layers. You know, you'd rather build the layers up slowly um, as opposed to just going all in on your first layer as dark as possible. Uh, you'd rather build it up and tweak it you know, with every layer um, until you reach the desired uh, detail. It's a lot easier to fix or tweak uh, small areas uh, that you kind of have gone too far with, but it's a lot harder when you just go all in at the very beginning and then realize that it's too much. So now I'm going in and, and I'm painting and then I'm trying to blend out my strokes with a really soft blender brush. And you'll see me use the blender brush occasionally uh, from time to time on the painting.
and you can see I'm just rubbing I'm dipping my paintbrush into water and then I'm rubbing that water onto the block and soaking it up with my paintbrush and that's how I'm able to get transfer the color onto the paper and it goes on a lot smoother that way So now I'm kind of working on the background a little bit. Uh, it's, I was getting a little frustrated with the flowers, so when that happens, plus I need to let this dry. Uh, so the, the paper starts to warp and stuff, and so you've got to kind of jump around a lot uh, and let this kind of dry. But I wasn't able to get kind of my brush strokes as smooth as possible so I got a little frustrated so I decided to just move to the background and work on it a little bit let things dry kind of get my mind off the flower but so now here we are back on the flower working on some of my shadows and highlights on these petals. And the other thing about these ink tints is that they go on a lot brighter and then they, they kind of dull down a little bit when they dry. So always keep that in mind too. You can see it real clear 
on this since it's sped up. You can see that when I put it on, some of these reds are real bright. And then after a couple of seconds, it fades down. So that's something you have to keep in mind when you're using these. <clears throat> So now I'm using a rake brush and it is a quarter inch rake by Princeton Select and it's a filbert and I use this to get to achieve some of the veining in the roses so they didn't just look smooth in the reference photo they had veins in it and instead of just drawing all the veins, I just used my rake brush to kind of get that veining texture into the petal. I'm not sure if you can, you know, if it relays very well uh, through the video, but you can really see it uh, in person and it looks really good. And I'm using it uh, flat and then on its edge to achieve the texture that I need. And you can see here I've gone over that area that I had done in white. You can see how well it masked over that and I was able to get rid of that dark line and fix that area of the painting. That's one of the things that makes these uh, so easy to use and so forgiving. And if you make a mistake, you just white it out and start over. The other thing I realized, it was easier to lay down my darks and then go in and add my lights. That tended to work better for me than um, doing laying down my lights and then adding <clears throat> my darks. And if, by laying down my darks first and then going in and laying down the, the lighter color while, it, while the dark was still wet, I was able to push it and manipulate it with the paintbrush, allowing it to kind of blend together and push that darker area paint where I needed it to go. And if you don't know what I mean by push, um, if you've ever done watercolor, you can literally put the color down on the paper and then go back and forth and push into that color and it will, it will recede back to its original spot and it'll, you're kind of pushing that paint back. I may not be describing it very well, but that's, that's the best way I know how to describe it. It pushes that paint around. Now I've added white to this section of this uh, petal because I don't that color's down too far. The red has gone down too far into the yellow. So I've added white and as you, you sit here and watch it gets darker and darker and more opaque. 
Um, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to fix that. The white and the in ink tints is just awesome in that regard. Now I'm back to using my raked brush. Yeah, I got this rake brush um, a while back just to give it a try. It's the only one I own, and I really like it. I use it a lot, and I, I guess I need to buy, go and invest in some more. Um, but this one, once it got a little dirty, um, at the very beginning when I first used it, I didn't like it, and I thought this was worthless. But as the as I've used it in the paintbrush, paint has settled down in the barrel a little bit and spread those bristles out a little bit more it's it's really kind of becoming <clears throat> you know really useful now it's one of those things that just gets better with age I guess so see how I'm going back over that area that I, that I had done in white and it completely erased that red that was in there. Now you do need to let this, the inks, dry between layers. Um. <clears throat> or you will start lifting off some of the ink if you don't. That's why I jump around so much and then go back and work on the exact same thing and then move away and then go back. Or you could, you could blow dry the paper too if you wanted to. I'm just too impatient for that. I'd just rather keep moving, keep painting. So now I'm using some of that um, Indian ink to kind of go around the dark sections of these petals. Now I've switched to, I believe the color is called Bark, to do some of these, these uh, petals within, on the inside of the flower. 
this is kind of a brownish black. I never use tr just straight black in this painting at all. I'm using that right brush again to get the texture of the petals. I was getting really frustrated with <clears throat> my brush strokes and stuff and then when I used that right brush it really made a big difference. Now I'm lining the second rows with the bark around the petals and then adding more detail. At this point I hadn't really done a lot to this flower. So now I'm starting to work on the leaves in the background. <clears throat> At this point I was still just trying to actually have leaves in the foreground. Um, but here in a little while I'm going to completely change my mind on that and go in a different direction.
Just a couple more tweaks with these roses and they're going to be complete. <clears throat> and then we're going to start on that background. So for this lighter green, it is called leaf green. And I'm going to fill in some of these areas with the leaf green. And then I'm going to go back with Indian ink, which I, I told you was like a dark blackish green color. Right now it's still just the uh, leaf green that I'm using. So now this is the uh, Indian ink. <clears throat> and as I put it over the green in certain areas that green underneath still kind of shows through a little bit so I'm still getting hints of leaves in the in the painting they're just not as distinct So even though I'm darkening up this background, I'm still using the shapes of leaves and stuff so that those designs back there will indicate, you know, and hint to leaves being back there and foliage being back there instead of just being a solid black background. I also get rid of this uh, red and yellow rose that's in the very back that's up towards the top <clears throat> I didn't like the way it leads the viewers eye off the page so I just go ahead and take that out completely as well So here's the final painting. I think it turned out, you know, fairly well. I'm pretty pleased with it. I still need to do a lot of practicing with the ink tints. Like I said, this was my first time ever using them and I had a lot of fun and I definitely would encourage you to try them and, and see what you think. I want to personally thank you for being a Patreon supporter. I hope this video has inspired you. Now it's your turn to go out and inspire somebody else.